People often ask me where the most dangerous drivers in the entire country reside. And frankly, there's a few different ways you can answer that question. If deaths are what you're interested in, the Yukon is the most dangerous place. 0.2% of the entire population gets snuffed out there by drivers every year. However, if injuries are more your thing, the most dangerous place is Nova Scotia. There, 1% of all drivers hurt themselves per annum. But if I had to name the most terrifying place to be on the street, it would have to be right here at our rehabilitation center. Because here, one of the people driving around is Canada's worst. Canada's worst driver. Two episodes ago, the eight most abysmal motorists in the country made their way to our driver rehabilitation center. Uh, that was a stop sign. <gasps> yep. When they got here, I confiscated their driver's licenses. Do you know how you get that back? I graduate. To graduate, drivers have to do well through a series of driving challenges. So far, one person has got their license back. Oh. Congratulations. Thanks. But seven motorists still remain in the running to be named Canada's worst driver. <laughs> what does this sign mean? And who is this man? Well, his name is Kim Lee, and he's here to test Canada's worst drivers on their knowledge of road signs. This one means mullets ahead. The meaning of this sign is obvious, but Canada's worst driver nominee, uh... Kevin, who is incidentally blind in his right eye, thinks it means... Do not walk, maybe? Don't forget you're driving. When he's driving in McBride, B.C. Breaker, breaker, one guy. Anyone got their ears on? Copy. Kevin distracts himself with a CB radio. Just want to catch those Kojaks with the Kodak and before they catch me, over. Kevin was nominated as Canada's worst driver by Lenny, his boyfriend. Kojaks with the Kodak? That means photo radar. And no. Today at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. He's doing about 22 right now. Kevin is about to learn the dangers of driving distracted. You can drive around this course easily at 25, correct? Over. Yes, I can. Over. Not while concentrating on a walkie-talkie, he can't. When do you usually use the CB radio? Whoa, on. On, on, um, when I'm on the highway, over. Would you have made that crash just now if you hadn't been on the CB radio? Probably not, over. You know that it's against the law where you live too, right? Not in BC, it's not. On your license, yes it is. If I'm an N-class driver, then yes. Which you are. Which I am, over. Tell me all of the things you often do that distract you while you're driving, Kevin. Well, I use my cell phone to play music, and I also have a GPS in my car. Ah! Holy <laughs> Holy hell! Ah! Over the next 10 minutes, we have Kevin play some music. Oh, let's see, songs? Oh! And do a whole bunch oh! of things that commonly distract drivers. Ah! Here it goes. Driving is a job that requires your full attention. Ah! And he crashes Constantly. Holy oh, oh. oh! Damn it! Get the drink that's on the seat behind you. You got it. Over. Uh, oh, oh, 
Holy Whoa! A recent U.S. study determined that eight out of every ten crashes that happen on U.S. roads oh. is caused by a distracted driver. What the? I can't believe this guy drives at all, let alone drives distracted. I mean that. I've seen a lot of bad driving at the rehab center. Holy f hell! But I'm honestly having a tough time believing that anybody can drive this badly, oh. even if they are distracted. Oh, Kevin, what? Stop yelling at me, please. Just stop. Just stop. Are you kidding? Are you kidding that you're driving that badly? Like, just stop for me right now. I'm stopped. I'm not kidding. Over. How is it possible that you're driving this badly? It isn't even possible to see the course anymore. Ugh. Oh. If Kevin is trying his hardest, he might be the worst driver I have ever met. Like, you need to hear this. This is the reason why I don't want you to get in a f another vehicle. I was trying my f hardest. Our next worst driver nominee, Klein. Can't identify a sign that marks a high occupancy vehicle lane. Wow. Or a truck crossing. I don't have that sign in Kelowna. Or a basic detour sign for a construction site. Show me all signs I've never seen before. In his brief driving career, 18-year-old Klein has written off two vehicles. Idiots. He's had his license suspended. I'll see you. I'll see him later. And he constantly drives distracted. No! No, <laughs> Klein! Klein! Klein's mother, Maureen, nominated him as Canada's worst driver. But she also enables him to drive this dangerously. Stop! Who pays for all of your mishaps? Usually me, or most often my mother. How can usually it be you, but most often it's your mother? Who, who pays? We do. Now, Klein is doing our distracted driving demonstration. What are you doing? I'm answering my text. Just reading the text puts Klein off course. Watch what you're doing. I don't, okay, I don't understand this. Klein does understand the dangers of texting and driving. Eyes on the road, please. He recently rear-ended someone while texting. Watch it. Oh, man. But Klein doesn't care. Seriously? He continues to text and drive on public streets. Why do I always hit that there? Klein's smug delusion is infuriating. Um, I'm extremely good at multitasking, including texting while driving. If this is good driving, I'd hate to know what Klein thinks bad driving is. Klein's mother needs to stop giving Klein driving money. I hope that this lesson kicks in and he realizes how dangerous that it really is. When we come back... Oh my god. You'll meet the rest of Canada's worst drivers. Dangerous goods. And you'll learn which of them drives distracted. Canada's worst drivers are being tested on their knowledge of road signs. What's this sign? You could go straight, or you could go also, uh, there's another road that you could go out. Diane is a novice driver from suburban Montreal. It's a sign indicating a passing lane. You've seen these before? No. At home, Diane hasn't noticed a passing lane sign. I don't even know where to look. Because she never passes other vehicles. I feel like I want to cry. Don't drive me, okay? Diane's husband, Stefan, 
nominated her as Canada's worst driver because Diane should probably have this sign on her car. It means beware of slow-moving vehicles. Um... Dallas. A nervous university student thinks it means... Yield to pedestrians or other traffic. At home in Vancouver... Oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna kill somebody. Pedestrians and other traffic make Dallas cry. I don't want to do this anymore. Dallas's sister, Jean, signed her up for rehab because... Confidence. She needs confidence. Speaking of needing confidence, what's this one? Don't know. Flora is extremely unsure of herself. At home in Edmonton, driving is important to Flora because... I work, I have kids, I study. All is quite far from where I'm living. Flora is living with Frank. Where are you going? Her impatient husband. <sighs> you don't know how to turn the wheel or what? Another person who doesn't know the meaning of a hazard ahead sign is... <sighs> stressed out Azim. He's a hazard on the roads of Alberta. Azim was nominated as Canada's worst driver by... 90 and a 70, Azim. Ray who's worried about the way his buddy speeds 120 in an 80 zone while weaving in and out of traffic. Hey, 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 hey slow down. When Azim isn't speeding, he drives with his hands full, which is why he's the next driver to be put through our distracted driving lesson. Almost losing control here. While Azim fiddles with a music playing device, He's being watched by our panel of experts. Our legal expert is Cam Woolley. Tim Danter is our head driving instructor. Philippe Letourneau is our high performance driving instructor. And Shamala Kiru is our resident therapist. So Azim is our typical uh, distracted driver, cell phone, GPS, smoking. Why the because it's not working. To make his music device work, Azim stops looking at the road. And he loses control. Food also makes Azim lose control. Azim should never multitask behind the wheel. I don't think I'll ever multitask again. I. I... I wanted to pee myself. The final nominee for Canada's worst driver this year thinks a truck crossing sign means... Dangerous goods. Margarita also doesn't know the meaning of an oncoming traffic sign. U-turn? In fact... But there's an exit up ahead? I don't know. Of all the people in rehab this year... Uh, railroad? Do not cross railroad. Margarita knows the least about road signs. Dead end? No. Margarita was nominated as Canada's worst driver. Okay, stop, 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 stop! By Cheryl, her friend and business partner who knows Margarita is... Very distracted, very impatient, very unfocused. Hello? Who's this? On public roads, distracted Margarita is far more concerned with looking good than driving well. On our distracted driving course, Margarita is learning that drivers who use cell phones are 23 times more likely to crash. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, I do. Is Margarita really grasping the lesson we're teaching today? I am. I am. I... Wow. See? Our car has hit so many foam cubes in the last hour. 
Hey, why is the gas not working? The radiator is now leaking through a bunch of small holes. Did I break it? She broke it. So, our mechanics do a quick fix by adding water and raw eggs. I wonder why they put eggs in it. If you're at home and you blow the snot out of your radiator, drop a few raw eggs in there. It kind of cooks and fills all the gaps. Not going to last a long time. But it'll last long enough to teach a child not to drive distracted. Makeup is the thing that makes Margarita most distracted. Oh my god. Oh my god. And she's not alone. A worldwide study done in 2009 said that the application of just lipstick while driving causes half a million global accidents per year. Her face doesn't miss a beat, but her driving skills aren't great at all. Holy, stop, 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 stop! Oh my god, that scared the hell out of me. You okay? Yeah. Margarita says she'll never drive distracted again. But I'm not sure if I believe her. Never again. No. Never again, right? No, yeah, never again. Are we done now? When we come back, it's time for our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. One piece of driving advice that is more important than any other piece of driving advice, it has to be. Look exactly where you want to go. This fundamental rule of driving applies in all situations, but the best way to demonstrate it is in our annual challenge called the Eye of the Needle. To teach Canada's worst drivers the importance of looking where you want to go, our high-speed expert, Philippe Letourneau, is about to give an eye-opening lesson. So to get you ready for your next challenge, this training is all about vision. 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 Vision is the only tool you have. You see that block over there? I want you to try to hit that box as much as possible right in the middle of the car. Front, you want me front to actually end. hit it? Hit it. Poof! Right in the middle of the front bumper. One by one, the bad drivers stare at the box and they all hit the box. Right in the middle of the bumper. What guided you to that box? Just kept looking at the box. So the lesson is, look where you want to go, and that's where you'll go. So I go where I look. When operating a vehicle at 70 kilometers an hour on our Eye of the Needle course, it's critical that you look where you want to go. And where you want to go is through the center of the arches not into the walls of the arches. So, that's where I'll be looking while driving our pristine Mustang, which isn't quite as pristine as when our rehab center opened just two episodes ago. All right, the eye of the needle. 70 kilometers an hour, look where you want to go. Should be simple. Lord knows the Mustang can go 70. Oh, it likes it. 60, that's 70 already. Whoops, I'm going too fast, 60, 70. Yes! Oh, I'm looking where I want to go, which is right through the middle. Wow, ooh, that is a tight turn. So's that. Yeah, so's that. It's all tight this year. But it's not actually that bad once you know the fundamental rule of driving, which is look where you want to go. Now. Did Canada's worst drivers learn that lesson? Klein learned the lesson. Where are you going to look when you're going through an arch? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. And now, Klein will learn the speed limit. 
70 kilometers an hour. Klein, 70K an hour. Think you can do it? 70, but not 200. Klein gets off to a ridiculously fast start. Before the first arch, Klein's already over 80. When Klein almost hits 100, he hits the second arch and loses total control. What happened there, buddy? You were going too fast. I was going too fast. I didn't uh, take that into account. Why are Klein and his mother laughing? She says that she wants him to improve his skills, and yet she keeps um, enabling him by kind of smiling and, and going along with his behavior. You find this funny, buddy? Oh, uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. This is why you're 18 and have already had 10 serious accidents, okay? Stop speeding. Klein needs to get his act together. I'm a bit surprised that I didn't do very well, but I don't know. Not much to say. Azim, who likes to weave in and out of traffic, is up next. Headed for the first arch. Azim's speed is absolutely perfect. But his steering could kill his passenger. Oh, are you kidding? Oh. At least you're consistent so far. Oh. Drivers on this challenge and on real roads consistently hit things more often on their passenger side. Oh, I broke the mirror. Azim needs to change his driving habits. You shouldn't be speeding and weaving in and out of traffic, my friend. Um, I guess not. Margarita is up next. Look where you want to go. Okay. Where Margarita ultimately wants to go is 300 meters away around a right turn. But when she comes through the first arch, Margarita stares straight ahead, and she keeps driving straight ahead. Okay, slow, okay, 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 okay. Why didn't you turn? Margarita didn't turn because she tried steering with her imagination. I focused on imagining the car going through as I was going up to 70. I know it sounds weird, but... <laughs> when we come back... Whoa! One of Canada's worst drivers does the worst piece of driving we've ever seen at the rehab center. Canada's worst drivers are showing off their steering ability by running through our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. Before anxiety-riddled Dallas left rehab yesterday, she had a therapy session with Shamala because whenever Dallas drives... I get really shaky, I cry, and I kind of um, don't really watch what I'm doing. Shamala's suggestion is deep breathing and positive affirmations. I know it sounds kind of corny, but it, it honestly really does work. I am confident. And I can do this. <sighs> I think that feels better. Awesome. Yep. It actually is relaxing. I think it'll benefit me. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. <sighs> I can do this. Here she goes. When Dallas takes off on our 70K an hour course, ah. she remains calm and... Am I going 70? Oh, see, I can't look at the stupid thing. She goes through every arch. Woo, I made it. At 65K an hour which is close enough to 70 for me. There. Dallas looked where she wanted to go, and she didn't shed a tear. 
No more crying ever in a car. <laughs> Diane has a problem with this challenge. The 70K is a problem. Is it? Well, if it was 40, I would be able to do it. Now, OK, yeah, OK. If it was 40, you'd be able to do it? I think so. Do you want to slow it down? Can I? Sure. Diane agrees to go 50. And when she gets to that speed... You are at 50. Her focus is good, but she hits on Stefan's side. I told you the passenger side gets hit more often. Diane remains composed, though, and... Yeah, you did it. This one, too. She makes it through the remaining arches. Almost cleanly. You do it. You did it. Diane failed. But she is definitely improving. I could be the most improved driver by the end of this rehab. That's what I could be. Timid Flora is up next. Flora goes, making her way easily up to 70k an hour. 70. But listen to the engine. Flora's still accelerating. By the second arch, she's going 140. Not good is when you stub your toe. This is potentially lethal. You okay? I'm okay now. If that had happened on a real road, it could have resulted in tragedy. Whoa, look, your bumper is all over there. Look at the car. You left the car over there. Yes. The head or the tail? That's our bumper? That was their rear bumper. Now, it's just garbage. Kevin will drive without a rear bumper. As the host of Canada's Worst Driver, I'm not allowed to curse, but... Holy <laughs> balls. Flora scared the <laughs> living <laughs> out of me. Let's hope this one goes better. Go whenever you're ready. You got it. I'm not thinking he's got it. In fact, the got it that I don't get is how he got a license got it. Get it? Kevin gets it up to speed. You're at 70. But he's never truly in control. Holy <laughs> oh. Kevin? Fails the eye of the needle. And of course you did hit on passenger side. When we come back. <laughs> Canada's worst drivers learn to use their mirrors. She's scared to death. While driving in reverse. Canada's worst drivers don't like using their side mirrors when they reverse. So, we're going to have them reverse a giant school bus around a giant figure eight course. That will force them to use their side mirrors. I see my back corner here. I see my back corner here. I'm ready to reverse. Now. I'm ultimately going to take a right turn in reverse. I need to swing the entire bus that way. So what I need to do is hug the right side of this course. I want to hug my right side because when I turn right, the front of the bus swings to my left. But I can still see where I'm going because of my mirrors, my mirrors, my mirrors. This is all about mirrors. My mirrors guide me around the hairpin turn all the way to the center of the course. Where it's the same thing again, just in the opposite direction. Is it gonna make it? Just. I love mirrors. This would be impossible without them. And that's it. 
Driving with my mirrors allows me to see everything that's going on behind me. Getting around the figure eight took me just over eight minutes. Now, let's see if Canada's worst drivers can do it. Klein is up first. When Klein's mirrors are positioned... Like that? Yeah. He takes off... Woo! ...in front of an enthusiastic peanut gallery. But before long... Oh, crap! Klein is causing damage... ...and he's laughing about it. Are they blindfolded for this one? Klein's not blindfolded. But he's not using his mirrors either. Holy Klein seems proud of this bad driving. And so does his mother. <laughs> if you don't use your mirrors, you'll never get this. I would give this drive a failing grade. You can see that coming a mile away if you look in your mirror. But scoring out of a possible 10... Oh, I... Oh, crap. Maureen is giving Klein a 10. 10? I gave him a 4. Oh, mother... Oh, I went the wrong way. No, no, of course not. How can Maureen give Klein a 10 on this disastrous run? Oh, he's just pushing them together. <laughs> Perhaps Maureen is the real reason why Klein is a dangerous driver. We give him a 10 for effort. I give uh, him a 6 because he sucks. 10 for effort? Give me a break, man. Score that for real. You always say that you think that he's dangerous, and then you turn around and you laugh when he hits stuff, and then you pay for his insurance, and then you give him a 10 on something like this? That's what we mean when we say you might be an enabler. Okay. And actually, I think we can put a big cross through the mite. You're helping him be a bad driver sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. The kids had 10 accidents in two years, right? Lives are at stake. Let's hope Kevin can calm me down. Do you use uh, side mirrors in a normal life? No. No! Yeah. When Kevin's mirrors are set... That's good. That's good. Kevin reverses without bothering to look at them. This is the straight line part of the course. He hasn't even got to the turn yet. Whoa! What the hell? Where the hell am I going? God, this thing's got zero visibility. Things behind you will never be visible if you only look through your front window. I'm going hard left, hard left, hard left, hard left. Whoa! Oh, Where are you looking when you're reversing? I'm trying to look. Well, I'm trying to use my mirrors. I'm watching. You're looking straight out the front window. Oh. Kevin never does use his mirrors. Oh, <laughs> Whoa! Son of a... Margarita doesn't know what she should see in her mirrors. If you can't see this back corner in that mirror, you're in trouble. Okay. Okay? When Margarita gets her mirrors set... Like there? Yeah. She tries using them, but... <laughs> Margarita's learning curve still has a lot of curve to go. Turn, 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 turn. Which way? Which way? Uh, Which way? Around the turn. What do you think? Uh, Azim knows how to use his mirrors. Oh, you're doing good. Yeah. Oh my god, you're doing awesome. He's doing good. Yeah, he's doing awesome. Oh, dude, look at this. Azim, you're like doing like, oh my god. Azim makes it to the end by using his mirrors correctly. Should be a bus driver. <laughs> Diane starts off terrified. She's scared to death. Diane may be scared, but she's focused on her mirrors. Oh. And she only hits one thing coming around the first turn. 
She's taking her time. This is not about speed. Headed for the second turn, I helped Diane get lined up. See that white car coming to view? Yes. That's your new target. All right. You're doing beautifully. And Diane continues beautifully. I think the penny dropped. I don't think she needs another piece of advice for the entire thing. I don't think she's going to hit another thing. Sure enough, Diane gets around the course without hitting another thing. She's she got did it. it. Woo! Baby. Woo! To keep Flora headed in the right direction, I tell her to watch me in her side mirror. You have to steer. Now I'm gone. See? So you have to steer. Do you see how you saw me and then I disappeared? Yeah. So that's why you have to steer so you can see me again. OK. Come on. <laughs> when we try again, Flora still doesn't get it. Now steer, 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 don't lose me, don't lose me, don't lose me, you're losing me, you're losing me. Flora doesn't know how to use her mirrors. <laughs> Dallas starts with deep breathing and positive thinking. I know I'm gonna, I don't worry, I got this. Come on, Dallas, you can do it. When Dallas gets going, she does look like she's got this. She's using her mirrors. She is. Yay. Yeah, she is. I'm glad she's using her mirrors. Otherwise, she might run over me. Don't hit me. I trust you. Don't hit me. Mirror, look in the mirrors. I see where I'm going now. When you learn to use mirrors correctly, it's just like having eyes in the back of your head. Oh, I see it, I see it. Dallas didn't cry once on this challenge. Dallas, that's awesome! When we come back... I just don't see anybody else that's in the same class. This episode's graduate is chosen. Do you deserve to graduate today? This episode, Canada's worst drivers learn the perils of being distracted behind the wheel. Never again. They ran our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. And they learn to use their side mirrors Me. by reversing a school bus. Where the hell am I going? Now it's time for them to face our experts. Starting with Kevin, who likes to drive with electronics in hand, even though his driver's license says he can't. Did you know that when you contravene any condition on your license in Canada, you're basically unlicensed, and that would, in the event of a collision, put you in a situation where you weren't even insured? Without insurance, if Kevin injures someone, it could ruin his life as well as the victims. You can lose your, your home, you can lose your career. There's a lot at stake beyond just points and tickets and money. I did not know that you could lose more than just your license. Klein could lose his life if he continues texting and driving, and the reckless kid knows it. A friend of mine was actually killed on a motorcycle because someone was texting and he rear-ended him. But you still, after that, traumatic event, text and drive, do you know? I, it's a habit. As a teenager, it's something, texting is something I do on a daily basis. And I have um, vowed to, <laughs> after I get out of here, to not do it ever. No talking, no texting, even have my phone off. That's great. Margarita needs to make the same promise. I promise I'm never gonna text, make a phone call, or do my makeup, or eat in the car. Woohoo! Yes! A round of applause for that. Flora won't be getting any applause. Her sideways skid on the Eye of the Needle challenge was the scariest thing I've ever seen in our rehab center. It's an exciting experience. <laughs> exciting in a bad way. Yeah. yeah, in a bad way. <laughs> what happened? My hand grips the driving wheel so hard. 
I'm focused on the place I want to go. I forget to control my speed. The, the body of the car just <laughs> floats to this way. I'm scared to death. My husband is scared to death. Luckily, we survived this. Dallas survived this episode thanks to her therapy session with Shamala. Did you breathe deeply during the Eye of the Needle challenge? Um, yes, I did. I did it before a little bit. And you aced that challenge. Yeah, it was good. Do you deserve to graduate today? I think I deserve to graduate. Azim doesn't want to graduate. Not this episode. And neither does Diane. No, I need you guys to teach me more. Who will graduate? The experts and I will now decide. Uh, let's not beat around the bush. Who should it be, Kim? I'm saying Diane this time. Diane? She, yep, I know she wants to stay. I just don't see anybody else that's in the same class. I can think of somebody who's in a class above. I think it's Dallas. I think that Dallas has conquered her emotional things. Um, she's shown she's very in control of the car as well. She's done well on challenges. Philippe agrees with Cam. I was going to say Diane, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Shamal? I'm actually going to say Dallas. She's learned some good skills. Um, and I think she also has some breathing techniques and some other behavioral techniques that she can use to uh, calm some of that anxiety. We've got a split decision, and Tim is the tiebreaker. Tim? I have to actually go with Diane. That means Diane should graduate. But I want to keep discussing the possibility of Dallas graduating, because Diane did do well while reversing the bus. Is that all right like that? But so did Dallas, and Dallas drove cleanly through the eye of the needle. Ooh, we made it! While Diane hit it while only going 50. On top of that, Diane is begging for more lessons, and Dallas is begging to be released. I want to teach people who want help. Let me think about it. When the thinking is done, the graduate is chosen. Today's vote came down to our most inexperienced driver, and our most emotional driver, Diane and Dallas. So, who gets their license back and goes home? Well, it's the one of you who the experts believe can handle themselves in big city traffic. And that person is... You, Dallas. <gasps> yes, I'm excited. <laughs> Congratulations, you really do deserve it. Before coming to rehab, Dallas cried almost every time she got behind the wheel. And... What am I doing? She didn't have enough confidence to make driving decisions on her own. Oh, am I gonna hit her? What am I doing? Should I go? Can I still keep going? What's the speed limit again? But once she got here... I did it! ...and was able to receive lessons... Vision is the only tool you have. ...and counseling... I think it'll benefit me. Yeah, I think so too. Dallas learned to make her own driving decisions. Very, very well done. Thank you. That was awesome. And she hasn't cried in days. I think I'm leaving more confident behind the wheel and more stable, and I think I'm just a better driver altogether. Hell yeah. No more crying. Well done. Join us again next episode when we get one step closer to naming Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. Oh! Oh! <laughs> the nominees learn to swerve and avoid a suddenly appearing object. Oh. Oh. They're taught how to handle a trailer this is getting worse and worse. And we learn who the herkiest, jerkiest driver is on our annual water tank challenge. Holy.
people often ask me where the most dangerous drivers in the entire country reside. And frankly, there's a few different ways you can answer that question. If deaths are what you're interested in, the Yukon is the most dangerous place. 0.2% of the entire population gets snuffed out there by drivers every year. However, if injuries are more your thing, the most dangerous place is Nova Scotia. There, 1% of all drivers hurt themselves per annum. But if I had to name the most terrifying place to be on the street, it would have to be right here at our rehabilitation center. Because here, one of the people driving around is Canada's worst. Canada's worst driver. Two episodes ago, the eight most abysmal motorists in the country made their way to our driver rehabilitation center. Uh, that was a stop sign. <gasps> yeah. When they got here, I confiscated their driver's licenses. Do you know how you get that back? I graduate. To graduate, drivers have to do well through a series of driving challenges. So far, one person has got their license back. Oh. Congratulations. Thanks. But seven motorists still remain in the running to be named Canada's worst driver. <laughs> what does this sign mean? And who is this man? Well, his name is Kim Lee, and he's here to test Canada's worst drivers on their knowledge of road signs. This one means mullets ahead. The meaning of this sign is obvious, but Canada's worst driver nominee, uh. Kevin, who is incidentally blind in his right eye, thinks it means... Do not walk, maybe? Don't forget you're driving. When he's driving in McBride, BC. Breaker, breaker, one guy. Anyone got their ears on? Copy. Kevin distracts himself with a CB radio. Just want to catch those Kojaks with the Kodak and before they catch me, over. Kevin was nominated as Canada's worst driver by Lenny, his boyfriend. Kojaks with the Kodak? That means photo radar. And no. Today at the Driver Rehabilitation Center. He's doing about 22 right now. Kevin is about to learn the dangers of driving distracted. You can drive around this course easily at 25, correct? Over? Yes, I can. Over. Not while concentrating on a walkie talkie, he can't. When do you usually use the CB radio? Whoa, on. On, on, um, when I'm on the highway, over. Would you have made that crash just now if you hadn't been on the CB radio? Probably not, over. You know that it's against the law where you live too, right? Not in BC, it's not. On your license, yes it is. If I'm an N-class driver, then yes. Which you are. Which I am, over. Tell me all of the things you often do that distract you while you're driving, Kevin. Well, I use my cell phone to play music, and I also have a GPS in my car. Ah! <laughs> Holy <laughs> Oh, hell! Ah! Over the next 10 minutes, we have Kevin play some music. Oh, uh, let's see, songs? Oh! And do a whole bunch oh! of things that commonly distract ah! drivers. Here it goes. Driving is a job that requires your full attention. Ah! And he crashes Constantly. Holy oh, oh. oh! Damn it! Get the drink that's on the seat behind you. You got it. Over. Uh, oh, freak. 
No! Holy Whoa! A recent U.S. study determined that eight out of every ten crashes that happen on U.S. roads oh. is caused by a distracted driver. What the? I can't believe this guy drives at all, let alone drives distracted. I mean that. I've seen a lot of bad driving at the rehab center. Holy hell! But I'm honestly having a tough time believing that anybody can drive this badly, oh. even if they are distracted. Oh, Kevin, what? Stop yelling at me, please. Just stop, just stop. Are you kidding? Are you kidding that you're driving that badly? Like, just stop for me right now. I'm stopped, I'm not kidding, over. How is it possible that you're driving this badly? It isn't even possible to see the course anymore. Ugh. If Kevin is trying his hardest, he might be the worst driver I have ever met. Like, you need to hear this. This is the reason why I don't want you getting a other vehicle. I was trying my hardest. Our next worst driver nominee, Climb. Can't identify a sign that marks a high occupancy vehicle lane. Wow. Or a truck crossing. I don't have that sign in Kelowna. Or a basic detour sign for a construction site. Show me all signs I've never seen before. In his brief driving career, 18-year-old Klein has written off two vehicles. Idiots. He's had his license suspended. I'll see you. I'll see him later. And he constantly drives distracted. No! No, <laughs> Klein! Klein! Klein's mother, Maureen, nominated him as Canada's worst driver. But she also enables him to drive this dangerously. Stop! Who pays for all of your mishaps? Usually me, or most often my mother. How can usually it be you, but most often it's your mother? Who, who pays? We do. Now, Klein is doing our distracted driving demonstration. What are you doing? I'm answering my text. Just reading the text puts Klein off course. Watch what you're doing. I don't, okay, I don't understand this. Klein does understand the dangers of texting and driving. Eyes on the road, please. He recently rear-ended someone while texting. Watch it. Oh, man. But Klein doesn't care. Seriously? He continues to text and drive on public streets. Why do I always hit that there? Klein's smug delusion is infuriating. Um, I'm extremely good at multitasking, including texting while driving. If this is good driving, I'd hate to know what Klein thinks bad driving is. Klein's mother needs to stop giving Klein driving money. I hope that this lesson kicks in and he realizes how dangerous that it really is. When we come back... Oh my god. You'll meet the rest of Canada's worst drivers. Dangerous goods. And you'll learn which of them drives distracted. Canada's worst drivers are being tested on their knowledge of road signs. What's this sign? You could go straight, or that you could go also, uh, there's another road that you could go out. Diane is a novice driver from suburban Montreal. It's a sign indicating a passing lane. You've seen these before? No. At home, Diane hasn't noticed a passing lane sign. I don't even know where to look. Because she never passes other vehicles. I feel like I want to cry. Don't drive me, okay? 
Diane's husband, Stefan, nominated her as Canada's worst driver because Diane should probably have this sign on her car. It means beware of slow-moving vehicles. Um... Dallas. A nervous university student thinks it means... Yield to pedestrians or other traffic. At home in Vancouver... Oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna kill somebody. Pedestrians and other traffic make Dallas cry. I don't want to do this anymore. Dallas's sister, Jean, signed her up for rehab because... Confidence. She needs confidence. Speaking of needing confidence, what's this one? Don't know. Flora is extremely unsure of herself. At home in Edmonton, driving is important to Flora because... I work, I have kids, I study. All is quite far from where I'm living. Flora is living with Frank. Where are you going? Her impatient husband. <sighs> you don't know how to turn the wheel or what? Another person who doesn't know the meaning of a hazard ahead sign is... <sighs> stressed out Azim. He's a hazard on the roads of Alberta. Azim was nominated as Canada's worst driver by... 90 and a 70, Azim. Ray who's worried about the way his buddy speeds 120 in an 80 zone while weaving in and out of traffic. Hey, 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 hey slow down. When Azim isn't speeding, he drives with his hands full, which is why he's the next driver to be put through our distracted driving lesson. Almost losing control here. While Azim fiddles with a music playing device, He's being watched by our panel of experts. Our legal expert is Cam Woolley. Tim Danter is our head driving instructor. Philippe Letourneau is our high performance driving instructor. And Shamala Kiru is our resident therapist. So Azim is our typical uh, distracted driver, cell phone, GPS, smoking. Why the is this not working? To make his music device work, Azim stops looking at the road. And he loses control. Food also makes Azim lose control. Azim should never multitask behind the wheel. I don't think I'll ever multitask again. I, I... I wanted to pee myself. The final nominee for Canada's worst driver this year thinks a truck crossing sign means... <laughs>